The Bible is the mark of the beast. Now today we have an important thing that we want to show you. It's the major thing that's with us on earth today. This is the witness of God that's in us. Only Holy Ghost people know this. Bible worshipers, I'm sorry, but you don't have the Holy Ghost. So you don't understand what we're talking about. But you people that's been touched by God and you feel God in you and you know God works in your life. This is for you. This is to help you to understand what Jesus has done for us. Okay, here we go. This is basically in the book of John about the comforter. He calls it the comforter or the helper or he'll call him uh, what paraclete, an advocate or whatever, but he helps us. Now listen to how he is so you won't be messing up. He said, I will pray the Father. Now he's going to ask the creator of this world that made us. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now I want you to get that. He will abide with you forever. You see, this is the only, this won't abide with you forever. This will pass away. But the Holy Spirit will abide with you forever. Now think about this. When you're in eternity, this is the only thing that will make you be a Christian. You can't be a Christian without the anointing. And so this will abide with you forever. That's the only one that's going to be in the first resurrection. The, the dead in Christ shall rise first. So as they have the Holy Ghost in them, they obey God by the Spirit. This is the only way you can overcome sin, have power in your life. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we might be called the sons of God. He gives us power to become sons and daughters of God. So this will abide with you forever. And this is the only reason I don't sin. Now get that. This is the only reason this hillbilly don't sin. This right here. And until you really experience the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you you might think you understand because you went to some Bible church meeting and they told you you had the Holy Ghost and they had you jumping around and, and singing and said you got it by quote scriptures. But you won't understand this until you really get filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a completely different thing. Amen. All right, now, even the Spirit of truth. Now, people says this is the truth. That's a lie. There's 41,000 different truths in that. This is the spirit of truth. This is the only thing on earth that's truthful. That's the Holy Ghost. The world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Why does Bible worshipers take this? Because they can see it. You can't see the Holy Ghost. Neither know of him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. See, he dwells in me. I know the Holy Ghost because he dwells in me. Punkin knows the Holy Ghost because Jesus has shook hands with us. The Holy Ghost lives in her. Now, you don't know it from reading about it. You know it because he comes in you. And you know about him from reading about it, but you don't know him from reading about him, and you don't get the gift of the Holy Spirit by reading about it and claiming it. All right, on we go. Now, pay close attention to these things. You'll learn about the Holy Ghost and how to relate to him. He said, but the Comforter, they call him the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Now, he sends it in the name of Jesus. He shall teach you all things. This don't teach you all things. The Holy Ghost teaches you all things and, to your, and, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, a lot of people claim them words in the book of Red, but Jesus didn't say them words to you. He said them to his apostles. Those words are not to you. The word he said to me, he said, hey, buddy, I'm going to start delivering you like I delivered this. Those words are to me. He said, the Bible's an idol. The Bible's the mark of the beast. Those words are to me. He told Punkin, welcome to the brotherhood. That's not my words. That's God's words to her. You see, Peter said, how about this man, John? He said, what's he to you? You follow me. We all follow Jesus Christ. He's our king. So he brings to remembrance them words in red to Peter now. That's who he spoke them to. And it's not the words in red that he brings to their remembrance. It's the words that he spoke to them. The words in red... Why do you need the Holy Spirit to bring those to remembrance to you? You can read those in this anytime you want, and they won't save you. The words in red weren't even in red when Jesus was speaking to them, and he told them many, many, many things that are not recorded in here. So relate to the Holy Ghost. Okay, on we go. And you're also making the Holy Ghost subject to the dead letter. You're making him less than the than the Bible, and that is an abominable thing. You're stealing other people's words. But when the Comforter, refers to him as the Comforter, 
is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Now this is the king that's going to be running the new world. He's the one we all bow down to. Every knee will bow down to Jesus Christ. He will testify of him. The Holy Ghost will testify of Jesus. He will not become your little playmate. He does not testify to you how great you are and you'll not have fellowship with him. If you tell him what to do, then you don't need him. You see, he tells you what to do. He tells you what Jesus tells you to do. When Paul had a thorn in the flesh, did he pray to the Holy Ghost? No, he prayed to Jesus. Jesus is our Lord. And we look to him. The Holy Ghost does what Jesus tells him to do. He won't do what I tell him to do. And he won't fellowship me because I have to be trained up to be godly. He's the one that makes me godly. After all these years, you become more like one with him. After so many years, you become one. When you first start out, he is really different to you. But after so many years, you become one. Your fellowship is with God through the Spirit, but Jesus is a king, and he is not subject to us, and he's not our best buddy that we carry with us everywhere we go. The Holy Spirit's in us, and he leads us and guides us. All right, here we go. Now, remember this one here. This is very good. He said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away... The Bible will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. I'm going to send you a Bible. That's local. Why, why are you shaking your head? <laughs> well, the Bible wasn't didn't exist in those days, and it's dead letter. You can make it say whatever you want it to say. That's what they say today. But it says the Comforter will not come if I don't depart. See, if I don't die and shed my blood and sends you of the comforter, he will not come. If I don't pay the price, if I don't stand the test. See, he did not die so you could have a book. He died so you could have the Holy Ghost. They diminish the Holy Spirit with a book. And the reason why they do it is because they don't have the Holy Spirit. That's, That's right. why they need the Bible, because they don't have Christ in them. That's it. All right, on we go. They refer to him as the comforter. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, that's your truth on earth. This is not the truth. Is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Now remember this. The Holy Ghost will not speak of himself. He don't make himself a personality. He joins in with your spirit. So you, you don't neglect the Holy Ghost. Serve the gift of God in you. Don't grieve the Holy Ghost. Don't quench the Holy Ghost. And don't resist the Holy Ghost. But let the Holy Ghost have his way in you. Now he won't speak of himself. He'll speak what Jesus said. Remember that. That's very important. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. What the Holy Ghost hears, that's what he'll tell you. Holy Ghost hears something from Jesus, and he'll minister it to me. I've seen him do it many times. And then he'll teach me the ways of God. But he won't speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He'll speak what Jesus tells him to, and he'll show you things that come. Paul would say the Spirit bears witness everywhere he goes that in the latter days it will be perilous times. So Holy Ghost will show me. And you can fast and pray and cry and try to get him to give you some great vision or revelation or to come down and touch you and do something that you want to do. He won't unless Jesus tells him to. That's right. He's in control and he's not controlled by us. No. He don't do what I tell him to do. Never have. All right, now here we go. John 16 and 40. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it to you. He will glorify and honor Jesus. He don't glorify himself. He don't speak of himself. He honors Jesus. When Paul had a thorn in the flesh, he prayed to Jesus three times and got an answer. He didn't pray to the Holy Ghost. So they pray to Jesus. The Holy Ghost will do what Jesus tells. He don't speak of himself. He'll glorify God, brings honor to God, and Jesus gets all the honor and glory. When Peter healed the Lame man at the gate called Beautiful, him and John. He said, why look on us by our own power? He said, God has glorified his son, Jesus. And he said, it's by faith. You see, Jesus speaks to you through the Holy Ghost. And he said, get that man, Peter. And he raised him up and God gets all the honor and glory. Now so, you don't pray to the Holy Ghost, but you do have to pray in, in the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Yes. If you're not praying in the Holy Ghost and you're praying to God way out there in oh, space yeah. somewhere, 
then you're not connecting to God. Your connection to God is through the Holy Spirit, and He is in you. So you pray to God in you, in the Holy Ghost. Amen. So remember these words. The Holy Ghost does not speak of Himself, but He glorifies Jesus Christ. And He won't say the things of Himself. He, he becomes one with your spirit, and you'll be under the power of God forever. This is the only way you can walk the straight and narrow road. The broad road is when you do your own will from a book or going down to church. You do your own will. With the Holy Ghost, you do the will of God. This is the only way home, children. So ask God for the Holy Ghost. This is the gift and promise of God to us and to the children that's far off. So ask Jesus for the Holy Ghost. Oh, God.